What is up, YouTube? My name is Luke. And I'm Leah. And we run LNL Realty, brokered by eXp. And today we're going to go over how to sell your home for sale by owner. I know that probably sounds controversial <laughs> because we list homes and we sell homes, but at the end of the day, it's our job to provide you value. There's a few things we want you to do first. Get a pen and paper and make sure that you take the time needed because this is going to be a little bit longer of a video. We're going to go over step by step from start to finish the documents you need all the way through the closing table for you to be safe when it comes to actually selling your home on your own. All right, so let's jump right into it. One of the required documents is going to be your seller's disclosure. So as the name implies, this will be disclosing anything that you know about your home. So like what the age of the roof is, when was the last service done on your HVAC system. Also, there's a checkbox at the end. It says what goes with the home when you leave, what stays with the home. So is your stove staying? Is the washer and dryer staying? Is your toilet seat staying? Oh, Funny story, we actually were working with sellers and that was one of the things they wanted to take with them was their toilet seat. So yes, you can take anything, most anything you want. Yeah. <laughs> Removable fixtures like that you can. Obviously you can't take your furnace with you. <laughs> yeah, and the two big reasons why, number one comes down to liability. You have to disclose the things that are wrong with your home if you know about it. Now you don't want to set yourself up for failure, but at the end of the day, if you know you have a foundational issue and you don't disclose that and an attorney finds out you're gonna be held liable and then number two when it comes down to it do you want to disclose every single time you have somebody come over to your house hey by the way my fridge is staying but the washer and dryer goes and then my toilet seats gonna to stay too you don't have enough time you most likely work a nine-to-five and at the end of the day you need to just give them a document and say here you go so the second document you have to have if your house was built before 1978 is a lead-based paint disclosure. Go to epa.com, environmentalprotectionagency.com. I'm gonna shoot you the link down in the description below. Click on it, download it, and it's something that you have to give them. And they have to sign off on it. It's a required document in the state of Georgia. Um, I'm not quite sure other states, make sure you see the regulations when it comes to that. But it's a very important document. And on that EPA website, you can give them a document that's called um, Protecting Your Family from Lead-Based Paint, something like that. Yeah. Long, fancy word. Go to epa.com. You'll be able to take care of it. Again, 1978 and before. These next few are going to be a case-by-case -case basis. But if you own a trust and your trust owns the property, you have to make sure that all of those documents are disclosed and ready to present to that buyer. Another case would be your estate settlement document. So this would be if your home, if you inherited your home or it was like a probate ordered home. Yeah, or like a will that you were given the house. Yeah, so you would need to make sure that you're presenting them with those documents that says, hey, I inherited this home or this was a probate home. Again, just disclosing that sort of information. Yeah, because the worst thing that you can do is have your property on the market, it go all the way to the closing table, and then the attorney finds out four or five, six weeks it's later. Tied up and it's it's not in your name. Yeah. And probate can take months. So if you don't do that right away, you're gonna continue to pay for your mortgage. You're gonna to have to probably find another buyer because they're not gonna wait around for another three months for you to sell them the property. So make sure settlement statements, you get that taken care of right away. Okay, the next document, if you were divorced in the past, is that uh, divorce decree, right? Yeah, that's divorce decree. So with that being said, if you go through the whole process and you start signing documents, and next thing you know, you do a title search and your ex-spouse is still on that title, they actually had to sign all the previous documents, so all of that is now void. You have to restart from the beginning, and now you have to get that ex-spouse to actually sign off on all those documents and be at the closing with you. And there's a lot of documents that has to be signed. Absolutely. So make sure you get that taken care of early. So one of the last documents that you need, you got to give your title company a call and you need what's called a preliminary title report. It's going to take somewhere, you know, five, 10 business days mm -hmm. for it to get back. And what that's going to do is show the actual buyer that you own the property, which is going to give them the confidence that they need. And it's just a required document when all said and done. Also, with any cases, you need a copy of the deed. 
So next, we got covenants, restrictions, HOA, POA. HOA stands for Homeowners Association. POA stands for Property Owners Association. Let me tell you a little story, okay? When you're selling for sale by owner and you do not disclose a homeowners association, it's gonna hold you back, okay? Let's say you get all the paperwork done, you're about to go to the closing table and you didn't disclose that you can't park an RV outside. They love their RV. It's their baby. They cross country travel all the time. And next thing you know, <laughs> they <then> realize, <laughs> yeah. The HOA is like, nope, can't have can't it. Do it. Guess what they're gonna do? pull the contract and now you just wasted four or five weeks of your time. So if you need that information, go to your HOA president, your POA president, um, you can call the title company or go to the county that you live in or the county where you'd be buying that house and they're gonna be able to pull all that information for you. Actually, you're selling a house right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go to the county and say, hey, this is my address, what are the restrictions on the yeah. house? Yeah, and there's also a homeowners association disclosure. So it discloses all of the information about the home so when you're presenting that seller's disclosure that we talked about previously that would be a good time to also present them with that homeowners association disclosure say hey just so you know these are the annual fees we have if your homeowners association has like a clubhouse or a pool or tennis courts or whatever it says all that good stuff so it's a good idea to also have that homeowners association disclosure yes and by the way even if your state doesn't say that you have to have one That's presented good idea at the present. time of the purchase and sale agreement send that thing in the email and make sure they received it even if it doesn't have to get signed now if it has to get signed Make sure it's signed, attached to the purchase and sale agreement, and all those documents get sent off to the attorney you choose. So, the next one, purchase and sale agreement. And the reason being is if you're selling your house on your own, you know, you don't have a realtor to represent you and you don't have one of those forms, but also, right, what happens when a buyer comes over and they don't have a real estate agent either with them? Well, you're gonna need to know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because there's a few things on there, right? The purchase price, you're going to have the due diligence period, earnest money, the time of closing, what attorney you're going to do or use, a bunch of time frames, and all the contract information you need. And what you don't want happening is a buyer coming over that doesn't have an agent says, I love this home. Now what? Yeah, close them. That's your job. You have to sell your house. You're selling for sale by owner. You got to be a salesperson. Say, hey, Awesome, let's do this. I have a purchase and sale agreement. We can sign this out now and get the paperwork started. And always use your own purchase and sale agreement. It's not a good idea to let a buyer come over, fall in love with the home and say, oh, I'll go home and I'll you know, send you a purchase and sale agreement. You should be the one that has that form yourself. Make sure that it's written by an attorney. Absolutely. Have an attorney review that. Because if you leave it in that buyer's hands, they could send you really anything they wanted to. I mean, draft one up. And oh. that could land you into some... Yeah, some horrible <laughs> some stuff. Yeah. And if you're watching this video, you probably got 100 phone calls from different investors saying, oh, hey, if we pay you a monthly payment, a one-time down payment, will you own or finance? And then they're going to send you a weird document that's like two pages long. A full purchase and sale agreement is seven pages. If you're in the state of Georgia using National Association of Realtors forms, and if you get a random, weird, hand-typed two-page document, you got to be careful because it's obviously not disclosing enough information and it's going over the terms of the purchase of your home. So Definitely. make sure you go to an attorney, please. I don't, I don't know how much it would cost a few hundred bucks. It's worth the money. All right, next let's talk about the counter offer document. So this would come into play if you received a purchase and sell agreement and say your home was listed for 200,000 and the buyer was like, you know what? I'm going to offer them $195,000 for your home. And you were like, you know what? I, I don't want to do that. I want to stick to my grounds for $200,000. Well, that would be a counter offer. You would be countering back with the buyer. Yeah. Because there's a few things on there too. What if they, you know, the initial offer says the due diligence period is like 14 days. They have a thousand dollars earnest money, and all of a sudden they request that you take away the above ground pool outside, 
right? And you agree to the price, but you don't want those things taken out. You need to have that counter offer document on hand because if you ask them to reconsider their offer and say, no, can you go back and change all of this? It gives them the opportunity to think, you know what, honey, do we really want this house? Mm -hmm. The only thing this counter offer is gonna do is amend the changes. And once that's in place, you still use the purchase and sale agreement, attach it with the counter offer for an amendment. You do amendment number one, depending if that's the first amendment on the actual documents, and then they just have to sign that one. Way less steps, gives them less time to actually emotionally think about this decision and yeah. push them forward. The whole goal is for you to sell the house. You have to move that needle forward, and the more things and more roadblocks you put in the way, less opportunity you have to actually sell when it matters. Another important thing that we highly suggest you have on hand are blank amendment forms. Luke, why do we need blank amendment forms? Yeah, absolutely. The reason you need blank amendment forms is because your original purchase and sale agreement might not be the same all the way throughout the process. Say you, they have a home inspection done and they see that there are mold in ducts that you didn't know about. You might have a little bit of a leak in a roof or something happened with the loan and the loan date needs pushed back. You need to make sure you have those documents on hand so you can quickly get those signed, get back so you can get your closing date as soon as you can to it. Because yes. of what happens a lot, right? If somebody's buying your house, they might have to sell their house, right? That's gonna be within the special stipulations on the purchase and sale agreement. You need to make sure that all the stars align because if you're selling your house, trying to save some money, not using a realtor, you're most likely buying another home if you buy another house and you close on that early, you do not want two mortgage payments. And that other person nope. is doing the exact same thing. So those amendment forms, make sure you have them on hand. Go through that attorney again and make sure that you have the legal documentation that you need. So another document that you really need is a final walkthrough form. Okay, within this final walkthrough form, your state might not require it. But regardless, again, to make sure to protect yourself when you're for sale by owner, you get this document out and there's gonna be two things on here. Number one, the buyer had the opportunity and chose not to. Or number two, the buyer did walk through. And if they do walk through, make sure they have the date and signature on there. So when you're at the closing table and they try to bring up something like, oh, something changed, uh-uh, you're protected. Because mm. the worst thing that can happen, of course, through this whole process, we're gonna get into this a little bit later in the video. Make sure that you don't ding up the walls. Make sure that you keep that house clean. And when they do do the uh, final walkthrough, there's no reason for them to dispute anything. But again, that document's gonna protect you at closing and make sure you have it signed and give that over to the attorney. So there you have it. Those are the documents that you need. Check out the description below. But before you do that, click the like button, subscribe, bell notification. We love you guys and we appreciate you for checking out our channel. We're here to give you guys some value. Absolutely. I know it seems kind of <laughs> strange that realtors are, you know, giving you advice on how to sell your home on your own because obviously most realtors and we would love to list your house, Absolutely. but we also want to make sure you're protected. We want to give you guys some value so you can feel confident when selling your home. Yeah, absolutely. So getting into this, um, we need to get your property ready to sell, right? You do not wanna put it on the market until you have all those documents taken care of that we just talked about. So here are the things you need to do. So one of the big things when getting your property ready to sell is taking away any personal items in your home. So this would be pictures of yourself, maybe you have some selfies hanging on the wall, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, family or photos, family like photos and down here in the south we love our monograms we love anything with our last name on it yeah <laughs> just be sure to remove items like that that a person someone interested in your home walks in and sees you and your family all over the home yeah. you know because absolutely if you walk into a house and you see you know, grandma on the wall with her little grandkids and puppy pictures and all this other stuff, that buyer is not gonna feel like, oh my gosh, honey, I see myself living here. No, they're gonna realize that this is somebody else's house and it doesn't feel homey. You need to make sure you take all the personal items away. And number two, declutter, okay? Please declutter. Please declutter. <laughs> it is so vital. 
okay? If you want to get your house staged, yes, you can get another two to 5% value on your house. If that's something you need, yeah, text but... us at 478-220-8220. We can give you more information on that. Otherwise, decluttering can actually increase the value of your home when the appraiser comes through, okay? So make sure personal items, Yeet. They can go Eat. under the bed, yeah. in the trunk of your car for the time being. Anywhere but home. <laughs> Stuff them in, in a closet. closet. <laughs> yes, anywhere. Yes, please. Absolutely. Then once you get all the personal items out and you declutter the home, the next step you want to do, professionally clean your house and get the landscaping professionally done. I know, you're saving money on realtor fees anyway, you might as well. But if you get a professional clean, you're probably nose blind, okay? It's scientifically proven that if you smell a continuous smell for three hours, you cannot smell it anymore. Your house doesn't smell like anything to you, but if there's a musk, if there's a nasty smell inside your house that you can't smell yourself, it is going to be a huge turnoff. And this is the huge thing. When a buyer comes to see your home, they already saw the photos online, they already liked it enough to come see. They're not looking to see if they like your house. They're trying to convince themselves reasons why not to buy. Do not give them a reason not to buy. And also that landscaping outside, start the emotions early as soon as they pull up in their car. Let them envision themselves living there. Let them see the fresh cut grass. Those shrubs are perfect. You want the entire experience from start to finish, be magical and let them be emotional. Absolutely. And just a little tip, you know, maybe light a candle or have some soft jazz music playing as yeah. your, your home's being showed. Just little things like that can really add to yeah. them wanting to buy your home even. Yeah, cool temperature. Make sure that all the lights are on and stuff like that. But yeah, keep it clean. So I get on Zillow.com and I see a home listed and I like, okay, I like this. But then I click on it, start scrolling through the pictures, and I'm like, well, there's an off-centered, the first picture is an off-centered picture of the bathroom, a picture of the closet with clutter all in it. I'm like, nope, let's hit the X, move on to the next home. <laughs> this is not 2021. This is not 2022 anymore. Houses do not sell in 14 seconds for 20 grand over asking price. The gravy train has ended. Everybody hopped off and went the other direction. Which you can check out some of our other videos that discuss that. Yeah. Um, but this leads me into my point of please, please get professional photos done. I am telling you, Under no I mean... no circumstance should they ever do iPhone photos. I don't even care. I have the newest iPhone 14 Pro. I will never take a photo on my phone for a client in right. my life. And real estate professional pictures, they're I'm not that expensive. I mean, for what you get, I, and yeah. I promise you, you'll have so many more people coming to view your home from those professional Absolutely. pictures. And think about this real quick. When you're on social media, when you're on Zillow, when you're on Realtor.com and you scroll, the only reason you stop is because you see two things. Number one, a beautiful front photo of a house that you can imagine yourself living in, and number two, the price. If you see a scrappy little bad taken photo on the first one, not gonna even Probably click on it. Probably not gonna click on it. So this is the steps here real quick, right? They're scrolling on Zillow. They see a beautiful home. They see the price, okay. They can envision something, I'm gonna tap. Next thing they do, they scroll through the photos from start to finish. And again, with my point, they're not really looking for, hey, how much do I like this house? They they're wanna, like, ch yeah, they wanna change their mind and be like, okay, why should I not like this house so I don't actually go and look at it? So professional photos, an absolute must. So in addition to professional photos, we highly suggest a professional video of your home. So take it away, yeah. Luke. Every single time, do not ever post your house without having professional vi videography done. Okay, I understand there's a lot of realtors out there and agents, I know they're probably gonna get mad at me for saying this, that have photos taken, they put it on the MLS, they put a yard sign out front, and then they sit back and pray saying, hey, please, somebody bring me a buyer. <laughs> You are at such a disadvantage selling for sale by owner right now because this is exactly what happens. You're not on the MLS, okay? And if you're not on the MLS, the thousands of buyers in your area that are getting recommendations from their realtors are sending them properties. But let me give you an insider scoop on this real quick. 
the programs, the websites, the, the drip campaigns that these realtors are using via email to give them those homes that they wanna see come from the MLS listing. So when your house is for sale by owner, I don't care how many websites you post on it, another real estate agent, unless they see it online while scrolling in the other section, not the property, even Zillow does this, there's an other, they have to search through that to actually find your home. Wow. So with that is, there, there's two things here real quick. Number one, the professional photography. Number two, the professional video. And what you wanna do with that video, this might be a little extensive, but again, you're at a huge disadvantage and you absolutely need this. That video needs to go on YouTube and then it needs to be a long form video and it's gonna be the entirety of your home and then you need to repurpose the content. What I mean is create reels, create shorts and you need TikTok. to put that sucker on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn and Google, okay? And you need to run targeted ads and I'm not saying those automated systems that do not work that somebody pays money for and drags and drops a circle radius. Every single person that runs ads on Facebook, I'm sorry, I'm gonna say this again, as a realtor or real estate agent, I'm gonna get a little salty here real quick. They do these pre-programmed ad campaigns. And what they do is they type in the address, a robot types in stuff about the house, and they click and drag how far of a radius outside of that home location do you wanna post these ads? And it just goes in front of people. No, look this up online, optimized, advertisement that target specific individuals and do your research. Me personally, I've spent hundreds of hours doing this and when I run an ad for a home, if somebody's talking, oh hey honey, I'm looking, you know, what, what type of home do you want? Maybe like a four bedroom, three bath, you know, our price range is about 450,000 and I would love to live in Bonaire, Georgia. Those are the people that our advertisements go to. There's no reason for you to waste money and spend on ads that just go out to people. You're looking to target specific individuals with targeted ads mm -hmm. to make sure you drive it to your house, okay? And you need ads on Facebook. You need to do carousel, which is when you have multiple photos of the property and run that ad on Facebook. And then also you wanna do it organically through all of the social media platforms. I know that sounds like a lot, but as a for sale by owner, you have such a disadvantage not having the MLS. People have to be scrolling on their cell phones or computers to find your property. It's not gonna go by what, there's almost 2 million real estate agents in the country and they're all giving their buyers. 95% of transactions in the United States have a realtor on both sides. So think about that. Even with for sale by owner, you have an even smaller pool of people that you're finding and they have to find you online. Again, we just want you to sell your house and get the most money for your home. And sell it quickly because days on market is super important. If your house sells for 100 days, what is that, Leah? You're it is a sale. stale listing. And, what, and you're going to yeah. end up selling your home on clearance, basically. You can't afford to do that. Something sits for too long, people are going to throw you low-ball offers. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you're going to lose twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. Again, the reason why we're making this video, I hate to say it, but the National Association of Realtors just came out with a statistic. The average for sale by owner loses $55,000 in the sale of their home. Now again, not all agents are equal, not all realtors are equal. You have to interview the absolute best person who's using video, who's using ads, and who can get your home sold for the most amount of money in the shortest amount of possible. But if you can take what I'm giving you right now and do it yourself, you have a chance to do that as well. Absolutely. But if you don't, you have the chance of losing up to $55,000 putting that house on clearance. You can't afford to do that. So let's cover showings. So ring, 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 you pick up the phone <laughs> and the other person's like, hey, is one, two, three Main Street still for sale? I would like to come see it. Okay, well, what next? Luke, you are a former Army Ranger and a former police officer. And I know with random people coming over You're to see to your home, safety can be a concern. So with you having those, the first responder background with you being special operations, what is your take on safety in this situation? You need to be safe, okay? Safety is so important. You have a complete stranger giving you a phone call. First of all, let me just be honest, 
They're going to call you from the time the sun comes up till the time the sun <laughs> comes down Monday through Sunday. And every single time somebody calls you and you don't answer, they're moving on to the next house. So you have to answer the phone every single time to schedule that showing because if you don't, they're going to move on to the next. But again, who's calling you? Is it a random buyer? Are they a real buyer? Are they trying to get you alone inside of a house? There's a lot, a lot of stories about real estate agents being abducted. You know, I feel bad for saying this. Children, be cautious being, being inside of homes because somebody comes over and locks the door behind them. Never show a house or never let somebody over before you vet them. And what I mean by that, you know, you open them up with dialogue online. Are you pre-approved? And then make sure you have more than one person at your house and also make sure your phone is ready to dial 911 if you need to. And finally, make sure you have an exit strategy. Never ever allow yourself to be inside of a room without an exit to a door. And before they come over, make sure all doors are unlocked and never let that person get between you and an exit. Yes. And then real quick, pre-approval. If somebody calls you, you have to ask, are you pre-approved for a home loan? If they're not pre-approved, they don't come over, okay? I know people can get pre-approved, but 99% of the time, if not 99.99% of the time, if they don't have a pre-approval letter, they're not gonna be able to buy your house. You're gonna waste your time, you're gonna come off work early, and you're gonna open up a door for a complete stranger for them to walk around your house, and all of a sudden, you can't accept an offer because they don't have a pre-approval letter. No way are you going to accept a purchase and sale agreement if they haven't spoken with a lender and they can't even get a loan. So if they don't have a pre-approval letter, they don't come over. And if, you know, get them in contact, look up some people online, see who has the best five-star reviews in your area yeah, on Google. Absolutely. So you have a speed dial and be like, hey, for example, we love Kim Hamlin over here in middle Georgia. Hey, Kim, I have a potential buyer who wants to come look at my home. Do you mind giving them a call for us and get them pre-approved? And pre-approval, I mean... <laughs> It literally takes how long? Like less yeah. than a day to get pre-approved. Yeah. So some people can get it done in a few hours. Just make sure, again, that you contact the right person in your area that can get it done for you quickly. So Lou kind of touched on this a minute ago about the number of phone calls you'll be receiving. Probably morning, noon, and night. Hundreds. Especially if you have those professional photos and professional video. Mm -hmm. People are going to want to see your home. So... Yeah, absolutely. So there, there's a few things when it comes to those phone calls. You have to be available 24 seven mm -hmm. because if you miss a phone call, you're going to miss a deal. If you miss a showing, you're going to miss a deal. But again, let me tell you the majority of these phone calls are going to be coming from investors. People flip houses and there's this thing called wholesaling that's getting super popular. And the thing is, there's these things called ISAs. These people that get paid five bucks an hour call around. They're going to offer you a cash deal, but it's going to be about 30 to $40,000 under what your appraised value would be and you're going to pick up the phone time and time again for an investor or a real estate agent's going to call you and ask you a question like hey how long are you going to sell on your own before you let me list it i want to come over and interview for the position or it's just a buyer's agent which is fair hey if i bring you a buyer are you willing to pay a commission because guess what 95 percent of all deals have a agent involved so the majority of the time what's going to happen is a buyer's agent is going to bring you the buyer. So those yeah. are just a few things you can understand when it comes to the hundreds of phone calls coming on. You need to make sure that you answer it, but at the same time, there's going to be a lot of dead leads coming in. So then when somebody comes over, you need to give them the grand tour, okay? This is the time that you sell, sell, sell. It's your time to shine. Yes. <laughs> Show them the house build some dialogue, get some rapport coming, right? Ask them open-ended questions about the house. Give them a story, okay? They saw that house online, they thought it was beautiful enough to come out. Give them a story they can emotionally get attached to when they come over, so they really, really love your home. Then also, lastly, ask for the business. Have the purchase and sale agreement ready on the kitchen counter with the seller's disclosure, the community association's disclosure, and all the other documents that they, you need and ask for the business. You don't get what you don't ask for. So at the end of the tour, sit them down at the kitchen table, start asking them some questions and say, hey, do you love my home enough to purchase it? It's gonna be pretty obvious yeah. right then and there. And if you can get them to sign the purchase and sale agreement, it's the easiest time to, because guess what happens? They're gonna leave, they're gonna talk about it, they're gonna start looking at other homes and they might forget about yours. But at the end of the day, you need to make sure that you have good follow-up as well. 
So after that showing, make sure you get their phone number, make sure you keep up with them with text, give them some phone calls, shoot them some emails, and make sure that they don't forget about your house. Yeah. Okay, perfect. They love the house. They sign the purchase and sale agreement. Now Woo! what? Woo! <laughs> There's a few things that they're going to do right off the rip, right? Within the first 24 hours, they're going to need to get that earnest money in, right? Usually it's within three days, but they need to get it to the attorney. And also they're going to do what's called a home inspection. You're going to have somebody come over to your house and inspect the home. And the, and the buyer will pay for the inspection. Yeah. They'll be able to select the inspector and Absolutely. schedule a time for them to come over. Yep, and once they come over, that buyer or the inspector is usually has a quick turnaround time of about 24 mm -hmm. hours. And then again, you need to have one of those forms ready if they don't have an agent so they can disclose, hey, we want you to fix this, this, and this. But again, as a home seller, you need to understand something. Don't pay for cosmetic issues unless you feel obligated, right? Normal wear and tear, that's okay. We're talking big ticket items. Your water heater, you didn't realize, is rusting out and it's about to break. Your roof is 20 years old and they don't want to buy the house without you putting a new roof on. Those are some big items that you might need to pay for, but again, hopefully you know that information beforehand, but that's what's going to happen soon after those documents are in. And once those documents are in, make sure you collect all the documents together and you get those over to the attorney to start this process as soon as possible because the loan's going to take a little bit of time to originate. Everything needs to communicate between that loan officer the buyer is using and the actual bank themselves, and then they need to communicate with the attorney while the attorney communicates with you and the buyer. And then one thing to add, it's usually with a conventional loan, it usually takes from the time that offer is accepted between 30 to 45 days until you get to the closing table. Yeah, and also with that, going over loans real quick, um, just ask a local loan officer, they can break it down, but there's gonna be conventional FHA, there's VA home loans, there's USDA home loans, there's cash offers, there's a lot of stuff, right. because and not all offers are the same. Exactly, and if you have a potential buyer that's asking you pretty detailed financial questions about loans and things, you know, of that nature, have them reach out to a lender. Let the lender answer those questions. I mean, that's even for us, being realtors, we focus on our lane. Right. <laughs> Loans are a whole different ballgame. Exactly. They change, what, every month? Different stuff going out? Right. And you don't want to give someone the wrong information when it comes mm -hmm. to that. Because if, for example, they come with a, a VA home loan, it's a specific VA appraisal that comes out. And for example, if you don't have a railing going down your back porch stairs, you're going to have to get that railing installed and it's going to hold up the process and if you would have known that beforehand and started doing the research as soon as you get the purchase and sale agreement it's going to save you some time so i know we closed out on this a little bit earlier i guess we talked about it a little bit earlier with all the paperwork you need to get all that to the attorney they're going to be in communications with you and from there pretty much if they come back with an inspection let's just pretend nothing's wrong it's going to be a pretty smooth ride just make sure that you choose the right attorney's office that has great reviews so that everything is smooth through the process. And then the day has come for the final walkthrough again, have them walk through, have them sign that document and get that sucker over to the attorney as quick as you can because that's the last and final step. And then guess what? You're going to the closing table. You're going to sit down and sign, what, maybe 100 different documents? Well, yeah. actually, the seller, at least in the state of Georgia, they have very few documents that you got to sign. So you yeah. may be in and out in 10 minutes or so, but that buyer yeah. is going to be sitting for a while. But at the end of the day, guess what? You get a check and, and you sold your congrats. house. <laughs> yeah. So, you did it. Absolutely. And uh, again, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of the video. Again, if you liked it, make sure that you like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. If you have any yeah. questions, just reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to be able to help serve you and your family. Yeah, because selling a home, that can be a challenging task. And it's something that we specialize in. So if you have any questions, yep. tell them where they can contact us. Yeah, just shoot us a text at 478-220-8220. Yeah. That'll be on the screen again. Hit us up in the comments and we'll be able to answer your questions. Even if you don't live in middle Georgia, again, something that we can do for you. If you're looking to sell your house or you're looking to buy your house um, in a different state, every state has different laws. Um, but if you watch this video and you're like, you know what, screw it, I'm not selling my house on my own, 
just send us a text or send down in the comments below. We'll make sure that we vet the number one real estate agent in your area that can be able to help you sell your home. Or if you're looking to buy a home, for example, there's no reason not to use an agent. The seller's agent's most likely gonna pay for their commission anyway, right? Shoot us a text, comment down below, and we'll make sure that we get you in contact with the person that you need. Thank you so much for staying until the end of the video. If you found some sort of value, please like, subscribe, hit that bell notification so you know the next time I put out another video. But here's the deal, I need your help. I need you to text me at 478-220-8220 and give me some suggestions. I don't just wanna post these videos for my enjoyment, I'm here for you. If you wanna see more property tours or maybe some other stuff to do in the Middle Georgia area, let me know. I'd love to know about your suggestions and also go in the comments below, type them down there and I'd love to get started on the next project.